Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Master Series, your guide to intelligent production, brought to you by Entertainment Partners. I'm your host, Natalie Nelson. In the Master Series, we focus on important issues impacting the entertainment industry and its workers through in-depth discussions with legal, tax, payroll, technology, and production experts. And today, our expert panel will be discussing all things Minnesota, from the new incentive program to the infrastructure, local crew, and talent base available. It's more than just snow. Two quick housekeeping items as we get started today. First, we encourage you to join the conversation by posting questions for us in the Q&A section of the Zoom call. You can do so by clicking the Q&A icon in the navigation menu, and we'll do our best to save time after today's discussion to answer questions. Also, please take a few seconds to answer a short feedback survey after today's webinar. This gives an opportunity for you to give us feedback, as well as suggest topics for future webinars. Your feedback is very important to us, so a few seconds is all that we ask. Now, I'm very pleased to introduce you to today's panelists. Today, we are joined by Melody Bayhan, Executive Director of Minnesota Film and Television, a position she's held since 2017. During her tenure, Melody has led the successful efforts to establish and later expand Minnesota's first production tax credit and incentive program. She has more than 20 years of experience in government and community relations, communications, and nonprofit management, having held leadership positions at ArtSpace, the nation's leading developer for affordable space for artists, the Guthrie Theater, National Organization for Women, and New York City government. Also with us today is producer and first AD, Van Hayden. Van began his career in the fall of 1989 when he left his native Minneapolis for Brooklyn, New York to intern on the set of Spike Lee's fourth studio feature, Mo Better Blues. Following production, Van was hired to work at the prolific filmmaker's Brooklyn-based production headquarters, 40 Acres and a Mule Filmworks, where he assisted in the sales and promotion of Lee's prodigious line of film merchandise, traveled with Lee to more than 20 college speaking engagements across North America, and worked as a production assistant on Lee's fifth and sixth studio feature films, Jungle Fever and Malcolm X. He has worked in film and television production for the past 34 years, primarily as a first assistant director. His credits include The Piano Lesson, Genius MLKX, Whitney Houston, I Want to Dance with Somebody, The Wonder Years, Keenan, Respect, American Skin, and Hustle and Flow. In 2000, Hayden joined the Directors Guild of America, where he was elected and re-elected to serve as co-chair of the Guild's African American Steering Committee. He was an alternate on the DGA's AD-UPM Council, a founding member of the first Assistant Directors Committee, and named three times to the DGA's National Negotiating Committee. We are also joined by Production Finance Executive David Mulver. David has over 15 years of experience working on Academy Award and Golden Globe winning premium content for film and television. He has overseen both film and television simultaneously, ranging from large budget international TV projects to mid-sized budget features. His projects include Yellowstone, Django Unchained, Silver Linings Playbook, The Hateful Eight, Marco Polo, Pachinko Season 2, Waco, and the upcoming feature film, Finest Kind, set to be released on Paramount Plus in December. From 2018 to 2022, he served as executive co-chair of Minnesota Film and Television, the nonprofit film commission for the state, where he played an important role helping to establish the largest tax incentive program in state history. He has also partnered with the University of Minnesota's Carlson School of Management to conduct research on human resources for film and television production. We're also pleased to welcome producer, actor, and director Mandy Jane Turpin. Mandy's producing credits include the feature films Mary Kiss Cam, streaming on Hulu, the psychological thriller Body Language from the creators of The Conjuring and Annabelle, holiday rom-com Rescuing Christmas, starring Rachel Lee Cook and Sam Page, and the award-winning features Sunny Days and hilarious dark comedy Just Plus None. 
She also wrote, produced, and directed the award-winning 10-episode series Uncorked, a web series. And her acting credits include Four Good Days, directed by Rodrigo Garcia and starring Glenn Close and Mila Kunis, Ready Player One, directed by Steven Spielberg, Powder Blue, starring Fortis Whitaker and Jessica Biel, and Sunday Horse, starring Ving Rhames, Nikki Reed, and William Shatner. She also holds a degree in theater, film, and television from UCLA. We're also pleased to welcome producer Llewellyn Wells. Llewellyn has spent 28 years in the entertainment industry. Early in his career, he worked on such highly acclaimed independent films as Baghdad Cafe, The Grifters, Dogfight, and Under Suspicion. Llewellyn won five Emmy Awards, a Golden Globe, and two Producers Guild Awards as one of the original producers of The West Wing. His recent credits include The Last Days of Ptolemy Gray. The Walking Dead, Dead City, Designated Survivor, and Animal Kingdom. Llewellyn also spent eight years outside of the industry working in the renewable energy and environmental sectors, serving as VP of Communications for Rocky Mountain Institute before founding Living City Block in 2010. And finally, today's guest moderator is Joseph Kianese, Senior Vice President and Production Incentives Practice Leader here at Entertainment Partners. In his role, Joe provides production and legislative consulting, financial, tax, and administrative services for domestic and international production incentives. He has over 35 years of experience in accounting, government affairs, production incentives, and tax, and has formerly held positions at Sony Pictures Entertainment, The Walt Disney Company, ABC Television Network, Paramount Pictures, and Ernst & Young. Joe and our panelists, it is so lovely to see you all today. Thank you for joining us. We have a lot to get to, so I'm going to go ahead and pass things over to Joe. Thank you, Natalie, and welcome, everyone. Welcome, panelists. So uh, we do have a lot to talk about, and I always try my best to make sure that the panelists have more to say than I do. So i just like to kick things off with sort of giving an overview of the state of the industry, which I'm happy to say is very positive. We've got the strikes over. We've got production ramping up and we've got producers out there uh, either with locations they've already chosen or looking for locations. So I thought this panel would be really important to really shine a spotlight on Minnesota to emphasize to the production community what Minnesota has to offer. I know that um, within the world of production, producers look for three things, crew, infrastructure and incentives, uh, uh, the three pillars of production. So, um, you know, we're really going to emphasize all of those things today, and I have the best group of panelists to do that for us. Um, I wanted to start off and ask uh, Llewellyn a question, and it was an article I read maybe a week or two in one of the trades, and that was, has Los Angeles become too high maintenance for ho- uh, for Hollywood? And I just be curious, I mean, I know what the article said, but I'm just curious what you have to say about those that, that thought. Well, it's an interesting question, and and the use of the term high maintenance is a little um, uh, sort of off the point, I think. Uh, Los Angeles still has some of the best film crews in the world. Uh, It has the best overall studio facilities in the world and equipment houses, et cetera. So there are incredibly wonderful things about producing in Los Angeles. Uh, The price issues and a lot of things that article addressed had to do with how much more difficult it is to get permits these days. Uh, in any big overfilmed uh, city location, uh, that could be Toronto, New York, Atlanta, et cetera. Um, a lot of neighborhoods are quite frankly fed up with filming. And so they make it more difficult through their city council, their mayor, whatever the city structure is governmentally to shoot in some of the best spots anymore. So a lot of the things that made LA the film capital of the world to begin with are much more difficult to work within now. The city's more crowded, the traffic's worse. Um, so I would say there are all kinds of reasons to want to shoot outside of Los Angeles these days. Incentives, of course, are one of them. I happen to produce one of the early shows on the California incentive, uh, but it's so competitive and so hard to qualify for, let alone uh, be awarded the incentive. It's very limited. Um, But they do have an incentive, but it really doesn't begin to compete with the kinds of incentives around other places in the country in North America and the world, uh, and certainly wouldn't compete well with what Minnesota is rolling out now. Uh, So Los Angeles, again, best cruise in the world. You know, there are certain facts of life and facts of this industry that make it uh, Los Angeles still a very vital and desirable filming location. But I don't care if I ever produce there again. 
<laughs> and, I, and I get that. I mean, clearly, um, incentives started in the U.S. in 2001, outside the U.S. way before that. <laughs> so ultimately, it really gave producers options. So clearly, and we're not here to sort of talk down California. We're here to sort of emphasize what else is out there. So, so Mandy, I want to just jump to you really quickly as somebody who has produced outside of California and is currently producing in Minnesota. What drove you to Minnesota initially? We're going to talk more about the incentive later because uh, it's definitely been built up uh, in the last year. But just maybe share some of your thoughts about what initially drew you to Minnesota. Um, locations. You know, uh, I went there in 2019 um, to the Catalyst Film Festival um, and had an opportunity to uh, kind of explore all of the wonderful locations around um, Minneapolis and the north. And um, it's very unique, um, but I'm not going to lie. It was the incentives that brought me there. I mean, th it's the number one thing. Um, but it is also, um, you know, Llewellyn had said this about the incentives. If the infrastructure and the crew, California, uh, I agree, has the best crew in the world. I mean, it's just, you know, it, you can throw a rock and hit, you know, a DP anywhere. Um, but I think it was, you know, I think with the excitement of Minnesota, I, you know, people are moving back there. They want to work there and it's beautiful and the locations are amazing. And you just have, um, you know, you have people willing to um, invite you into their neighborhoods. Like Luan was saying, um, it gets difficult after, you know, um, neighborhoods are constantly with production. Um, so I think that was a huge um, bonus for me. Um, was locations. It's just so beautiful. The city. I, and I just build on what Mandy just said then a little bit. Uh, you Please. know, you had said the three most important things that a producer or a studio is looking for when they're considering which state or which city to shoot in. I think, uh, at least for me, the most important thing is, is the show there mm -hmm. creatively. And um, if not, then it gets really hard in some of these sort of overshot areas of the country now uh, they just don't offer the kind of variety of locations and beautiful things that uh, Minnesota has to offer from the beautiful Iron Range locations up north to the farms down south and west to Minneapolis, which is a, both a vibrant major American city and has some wonderful sort of post-industrial uh, sections to it. Mm -hmm. So just a yeah. real variety of locations. And that's as important as anything else, of course. Yep. You know, there's a lot I, I, that came to mind as, as you were as you were chatting there. And, and that is, is just, you know, really only in the last 20, 25 years have incentives really come into play as such a huge driving force of, of um, investment and, and determining where a lot of things go into production. You know, back in the 90s. Minnesota was extremely active with film production from the Mighty Duck series, uh, Jingle All the Way, Fargo. I mean, the, the the Grumpy Old Men movies. There was a lot of production that happened here. And because of the incentives uh, that started to you know pop up around the country, that's part of what, what pulled a lot of the activity out of here. It wasn't because of the fact that, you know, the crews here weren't good. Um, in fact, I would say just in the, the character of the typical Minnesotan, uh, it, the crews here work pretty hard and take a lot of pride in the work that they do. And there is no question that California still has such a a robust workforce and experience and, and is such an excellent place to produce, but there's a very positive mindset here and, and the right attitude from people as they show up on set every day. Uh, I think we're all saying the same thing. Clearly locate everyone's looking for unique locations. You know, mm -hmm. As we were prepping for this uh, panel, I keep bringing up Oklahoma as an example of a state that, you know, 10, 15 years ago was sort of, up and coming and now it's attracting feature films like killer of the flower moon and major television series like fx so it's definitely a process to build but I, what i think it's important that dave you mentioned i want melody to talk more about it that it's not like minnesota's all of a sudden doing this it's been in the game for a very long time uh mm -hmm. and what's happened now is the incentive has improved and along with that the crews are developing further as well as the infrastructure. So, so Melody, I want you to talk a bit more about uh, the history of Minnesota and also what you've done since you've been there to sort of help build the industry. And then we'll jump into uh, one of the bands to talk about uh, 
the misperceptions that people have about Minnesota. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you, Joe, for for hosting us. We're really excited to be here. Um, Minnesota, you know, we're we're rebuilding our industry here, but we're not starting from zero. Um, you know, going as far back as uh, 1970, 71, when airport was uh, shot in Minnesota, we have always had a thriving production uh, industry here. Um, a lot of that was um, certainly feature films um, up through the the rise of incentives. But we also, because we have such a, a diverse corporate uh, community and a very large advertising industry here, we've always had a really strong commercial industry. We have also kind of been one of the leaders in the country, I think, in in. Um, with our television production, producing the unscripted reality series for Food Network and HGTV and um, all of those kinds of things with intuitive and committee films and tremendous. Um, so we've had a lot of work ongoing. It's just our feature film uh, and and scripted series production fell off after uh, incentives began to be a huge factor. Um, and so what has happened is while we've kept the industry going at a low level, uh, since 2017, we really put our focus on uh, getting a tax credit established because we knew that that was really the only way we were going to be competitive again. We had a small rebate program for years and it just didn't keep up with the rest of the country. Um, so we got uh, the tax credit, as I said, started in 2017, got it passed in 2021 at a very, very small level, um, which in some ways was great for us because that gave us uh, a couple of years to ac actually build the program itself. Um, and, and you know, <laughs> Mandy, sorry, we practiced on Mandy's uh, <laughs> movies, but what that did was really allowed us to work out some of the issues. We have, um, you know, taken feedback from producers and applicants and been able to make some changes to the program. And then this this past year, we got that program expanded to an annual cap of 25 million, which I think puts us really in a great position to welcome the major studio productions, the big budget productions. Sadly, that expansion happened right as the industry was shutting down because of the strikes. Mm -hmm. So um, we are still sitting on 25 million in credits, um, which will roll over in the next calendar year and be added to with another 25 million. So we will have $50 million in credits available in 2024. That's a great thing to emphasize. And I think the other thing maybe you can emphasize as well, and I, I want to do a deeper dive on incentives a little bit later, but mm -hmm. how, I mean, for mm -hmm. me, when I look at an incentive program, I am focused on a sunset date. Not that a legislation can't change at any point, but when I see a sunset date out a number of years, I sense that the jurisdiction has a long-term investment in the program, knowing that it's going to take time to build. So within Minnesota, what's what's the sunset date for the current program? Yeah, that was that was a huge issue because when we when the initial tax credit was passed, it was very small and very short. Um, so with this expansion, we got an extension of eight years. So we have an eight year sunset on it from this year. Luella, I want to come back to you on that point as somebody who produces television. I know how important that is to know that if you're going to basically plant a flag in a state and set up a TV production, you want to know that the incentive is going to be around. So I'm going to come back to that point. But, but I did want to jump to Van for a second because we were also joking before we went live about people's perception of Minnesota. And though, <laughs> though I've been there a few times, I, I joke that whenever I think of Minnesota, I, I think of the opening of the Mary Tyler Moore show. Um, but I, I know one of the things you wanted to talk about, Van, is uh, some of the misperceptions uh, that people have about Minnesota. Yeah, I, I think um, I think there was a real uh, shift in the perception uh, in the wake of the George Floyd 
uh, murder and the attention that uh, Minnesota drew as a result of that. And I think uh, preceding the Mary Tyler Moore years, I think there was a perception that Minnesota was just comprised of this Scandinavian mm -hmm. uh, ice skate yeah, 24 months out of the year, 12 months out of the year. And, and as we've already alluded to, uh, we've got incredible locations here. Everything from, like Lou said, the urban settings to farmlands to the, our incredible Iron Range and the Boundary Waters Canoe Area up north at the top of the state. These are places that you cannot replicate. Duluth has one of the largest international shipping uh, headquarters of, of anywhere in the world. And these various locations are so spectacularly beautiful. We want to share those incredible locations with the rest of the country, with the rest of the world, because we also think that it'll also draw people here. Uh, myself and David Mulver, you know, we returned to Minnesota. I grew up here. Uh, and I went away to New York and then Los Angeles and spent 25 years in Los Angeles. And, and I came back here and it's been wonderful to be back. I get to spend weekends and evenings with my family. Uh, and it's an incredible experience. Lou, Lou, Lou was in Los Angeles for years, and now he's relocated here based on, you know, just the, the incredible lifestyle you could have here. So, um, and in terms of some of our populations, you know, we have, you know, I think we have 11 tribal nations headquartered here. Uh, so we could have easily done this. We, we'd like to invite Mr. Scorsese to come here, <laughs> shoot, uh, you know, flowers too. <laughs> Erling Harjo, if you're out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have the largest Somali population in the nation here. Uh, the largest Hmong population uh, from, you know, people that were refugees from, you know, uh, Cambodia, you know, following the Vietnam War. So we've got this great story that we, and we've got all these amazing artists and we want to share this. Uh, one thing that Melody didn't mention about, uh, uh, what's also a draw is our incredible theater community. You know, we have 60 independent theater companies headquartered here. So we have, you know, a thousand, you know, actors that are really talented and they want to bring their talents to the screen and we want to help them do that. You know, you, you bring up another really great point, Van, in that, you know, going back to just the industry as a whole, obviously locations and the creative side's always there, but we can't ignore economics. So that's one of the reasons incentives obviously is critical to every for every production, but also costs. And, and we see this also happening personally, right? People are relocating to locations where the cost of living is less. And so, uh, Dave, and you and I were talking as we were prepping for this, you know, when you think about Minnesota, uh, just as, uh, a, as a general production cost, you know, if you want to talk about, you know, how things are just a lot less. So that's also almost an invisible incentive that you get by producing in Minnesota versus in a more expensive location. Yeah. I mean, certainly, you know, the labor here is, uh, you know, I believe it's ASA non Maryland rates here. So, you know, the, the rates are going to be very competitive, uh, you know, compared to some of the other places around the country. Um, a lot of the crew base here, actually, um, you know, there's a lot of people that sort of did honorable withdrawals from the unions just in the years that some of the feature and television work wasn't here. If they had to make adjustments in their careers uh, during that period of time, I, I think, you know, within the union membership that is here, there's a lot of optimism that those people are going to come back just the way that Van and I have, the way that Lou is now here, Mandy is now here. Uh, Mandy, you bought a house here, right? I'm not wrong about that. So, oh, like, yeah, I did. You know, <laughs> everyone on this panel I feel left like, out. I have to buy a house. I, <laughs> yeah. Come on, Joe. I'll give you my broker's number. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think economically, there's just interesting opportunity here. I think, you know, different opportunities, whether you're an independent producer or, or a studio coming in, because there is such a large business community here. There are 17 Fortune 500 companies that are headquartered here. And I, you know, I believe they're towards the upper half of the, uh, you know, that Fortune 500 list. So, you know, because of that, there just is a real good business mindset 
Uh, and the businesses have been big supporters of the arts. Uh, the headquarters for Ameriprise Financial is two blocks away from me, and they've got a gigantic Maya Lin sculpture in the lobby of their building. Uh, it, you can't walk more than two or three blocks in the Twin Cities without encountering a sculpture or a statue or a beautiful park. Uh, it, there, there's parks in the area here that you walk around them and they've, they've got the same sort of um, design and even, you know, hand railings uh, from from the same architectural era that you see in Central Park. So I, I think, you know, not only is there business opportunity here in terms of branding partnerships with major corporations, marketing, uh, integrated marketing strategies, uh, you know, the, the incentive is great, but all you're doing in production is spending money. So at some point, the idea is to make that money back. And I think, you know, there are partnerships that can be explored as production ramps up here with some of the other businesses that can help in the marketing and, and the branding opportunities that intersect with film and TV entertainment. And I, can I add oh. about about Minnesota's business community that, as Dave mentioned, you know, we do have these major corporations headquartered here uh, from Target and Best Buy to General Mills to 3M, Cargill and U.S. Bank. Um, our tax credit is a transferable tax credit. So no one needs to worry about whether or not there's a market for these tax credits if they choose to sell them um, after production. There is a market in Minnesota. And can a I add on to, um, I, I want to add on to the um, the local talent. Um, you know, when I first did Mary Kiss Cam, um, you know, it, we did it very quick. We flew actors in. As I did body language, we we kind of delved more into the Minnesota talent. And then on this last movie I just did, Rescuing Christmas, every single actor except for the two leads and actually Rachel Lee Cook is originally from Minnesota were Minnesotans. And for me, as a as a producer, because it it's always my goal if I'm going to use incentives in that state. I want the state to benefit. And I think the interesting thing that Melody and Dave um, brought up were, was a lot of these businesses just think it's actors, directors, and writers. And when I show them an economic impact report of how much I spend in the state versus how much the state gives me, they just, they can't believe it. I, you know, we talk about catering, we talk about hair and makeup, we talk about all these, all these um, different um, support staff that keep things going like accountants and, and everything. And I think that's sometimes with the business when they start to realize um, the, the widespread um, impact that movies have very quickly. Cause like Dave said, we spend money very quickly there, um, you know, and, and, you know, and that to me benefits every small town, big town, everybody that that's involved in the um, in the production. So it's, it's, it's really exciting when the incentives um, help you do that. And, um, and you get to hire all the actors were from Minnesota. It was awesome. You know, that, so you some of about that. favorites in rescuing yeah. Christmas. I'm so excited to see that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it was really exciting. So. So Llewellyn, I wanted to ask you, I know you haven't produced in Minnesota yet. Uh, I'd like to just have you share what you like about Minnesota thus far and maybe just talk about some of your other experiences with other jurisdictions and not necessarily to criticize, but just sort of compare and contrast. Sure. Well, I mentioned before, I think the creative opportunities in the state are amazing. And look, as a producer and part of my job, of course, is to deliver a project on budget and on schedule. But I don't want to get on a plane ever to scout with a director and a showrunner and television or a production designer and take them to a place that doesn't work creatively for the show. So that is one of the most important things to me as a producer. Does the show work there? Is the narrative story possible to tell there, both uh, um, visually as well as with the support people needed to make it happen? So I think that's all here in Minnesota. So I wouldn't hesitate to try to sell Minnesota as a shooting location on any project I did that was appropriate to this environment. Um, it is a... 
it's a buyer's market when you're shopping as a producer, or a studio right now um, for a different incentive markets. Um, I've worked in Atlanta, both ends of Canada, worked in uh, Florida, New Jersey. I've worked in most of the incentive environments, Southern California has said before. Um, and I just did a series in New Jersey, which you know, was a terrific experience. But when I was putting together the options for the current series I'm producing, we wound up choosing Chicago. Uh, there was a one-on-one -on -one competition with New Jersey. Uh, the show would have worked creatively in either place, but um, it was stated earlier that there are certain structural um, cost incentives here that are outside of the tax incentive itself. I mean, you can get locations for less money. You can get all the additional non-union help as well as the fact that the, it is one of the lower union rate cards uh, locations in the country. Um, you can get all of these things at a, at a premium discount. Uh, those things add up. When we're trying to pick between New Jersey and Chicago, they both have good in, incentive programs. Uh, we chose, I, I led the charge to making Chicago the choice with Warner Brothers Television and the, and the creative producers. Uh, it was a numbers game. Yeah. And in the end, New Jersey and New York market is really expensive. The union rates are high. The cost of living is high. Locations are high. Chicago's much less so. I think if I were shopping that same show now, I would absolutely pitch uh, Minneapolis as a as a shooting location with these incentives and the other cost um, elements that we talked about already. Uh, Minnesota would be very competitive with with any of the other um ASA union contract um, incentive markets. So it is a shopper's market. They're well, trying to the on location their location based, the yeah. location based work that Lou is talking about, I think will help drive some of the initial projects that come here. Um, but there's also, as a result of that, going to be developers that start circling and going, you know, you know, where can I put my soundstage uh, near downtown St. Paul? Like they'll, they'll, you know, be able to see the logic of investing from a developer standpoint to create the stages that used to be here, uh, you know, when Energy Park Studios was uh, really, you know, the, the big space that everyone used uh, back in the 90s. And then, you know, it, it wasn't a sustainable business when things dried up in the 2000s and 2010s, but those things will come back. And in the short term, you know, I think, you know, producers like Mandy, Lou, you know, anyone working in the studio system as well as, you know, they'll find ways to solve the short term problems for stage space if they want to spend, you know, and, and utilize the state for more than just the locations that it has. Uh, oh, yeah, we have to be able to do the for wherever we take a show, particularly yeah. in television, even so in, in independent and major features. Um, and we've all used uh, adaptive reuse spaces in our careers. <laughs> yeah, and and are they the same as working on it? Currently yeah. available. <laughs> so many uh, warehouses and empty, beautiful-looking buildings here. There'd be plenty of ways to to make your stage space work in, in the Minnesota area while you're, well, as David said, people are deciding where they're going to put their next soundstage up. Yeah. And Mel, uh, you Joe, want to I say something? Joe, I just wanted to add that yeah, uh, please, we also have an inherent uh, geographical location. You know, we're halfway, you know, it's a three hour flight uh, mm -hmm. from Los Angeles to Minnesota, uh, as opposed to a six hour flight to New York or a four and a half hour flight to Georgia. Uh, we've also got the advantage of being an hour earlier in the time zones. So we're, we're literally a 55 minute flight uh, from Minneapolis to Chicago. So you could, you know, there's so many people starting to talk about working in Chicago and then, and then having a residence here and being able to come home on a Friday night and, and being home all weekend. So we have, you know, that's just one of those extra little bonuses that, you know, we have to offer geographically. Yeah. And I'm glad you bring that up, Van, because that allows me to bring up another uh, point about the just the ease of getting around and the accessibility. You know, if you fly into St. Minneapolis, St. Paul International, and there are multiple direct flights from L.A., New York, Atlanta every day, um, 
in 15 minutes, you can be in downtown Minneapolis or downtown St. Paul. If, you know, 20 minutes, you can be on a farm uh, or 20 minutes, you can be in a forest or at a lake. It's there is so much that is accessible right with either within the the zone or just beyond it. So um, that's something that is is hard to find in some of the other major hubs, certainly New York. You know, you're going to have to travel half a day to to find the same kinds of locations that you'd be able to find here in the zone. So yeah, don't don't think about trying to make a company move in Georgia either. And you can <laughs> outside of Atlanta. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, the, the airport wise also, you know, if if you have a list talent or studio executives coming in on private flights, there's a regional airport five minutes outside of downtown St. Paul that, you know, was just recently re renovated uh, for the Super Bowl, maybe four or five years ago. So that smaller airport is you know, really caters to private private jets and, and business that has to come in and out quickly uh, with accessibility to, you know, the Twin Cities area. Uh, and even the international airport, I'll, I'll just quickly say, is consistently rated among one of the top airports uh, in the country. And that's before the 250 million that they just announced, I think that they're going to be investing to redo the entire interior of the airport uh, to to continue to be competitive. So from transportation, uh, there are a lot of good options here. Uh, and Duluth as well up north has you know one of the largest runways uh, in the in the country. So it, it can cater if you're if you're bringing in a you know, the Air Force or or anything <laughs> for your movie, it, it, it can accommodate, uh, you know, a space shuttle landing up there. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all touching on the same thing that I just really want to emphasize for the audience, although we're not going to be able to really give examples for everything. But again, goes back to perception. I think people need to realize not what Minnesota is, but what it can be on exactly. film. Because And that's, you know, with, with the big cities and the, the lakes and, and the it, so it, that's an important thing to emphasize. Uh, you know, we still have plenty of time, but I did want us to spend a bit of time on the incentive program as it stands today. And Melody, maybe you and, and Dave can take the lead and just sort of walk you through the basics in terms of what it is, the yeah. funding, the sunset dates, what qualifies. And then I, I wanted to go jump back to uh, to Mandy because I know that she's produced in upstate. Uh, I sound like I'm a New Yorker, which I am, <laughs> but uh, upstate Minnesota. <laughs> Uh, because up there as well. We call it further north, Joe. Yeah. Further north. <laughs> See, the New Yorker in me came out. Uh, but the, the regional and local incentives in Minnesota as well. But let's start with the state. Yeah. Um, so just a broad overview. Uh, we have a 25% transferable tax credit. Um, there is, um, as I mentioned before, $25 million annual cap. There is no per project cap though. Um, there is a minimum qualified expenditure of $1 million. Um, and the any unused credits, as I also mentioned before, are going to roll forward into the next year. So we'll have we'll be starting 24 with about $50 million in credits. Um, we our, our program does allow uh, some above the line with limitations and some below the line. Um, our above the line uh, qualifications allow you to bring in a producer, your director or multiple directors if it's episodic uh, and all of your above the line talent um, and qualify those salaries uh, with a cap of 500,000 per. Mm -hmm. We have also now moving forward, we will be allowing uh, non-resident below the line salaries to qualify at 15 percent. Um, we understand, you know, as much as we are so proud of the the local crew that we have here, we know that it's not going to be deep enough yet 
to be able to handle more than one or two projects or a really big budget project. So um, we know that we we knew that we had to make some concession in that way. So we I, I think that's going to make a lot of folks look at us who maybe wouldn't before um, the fact that you can at least get some of your uh, some return on the crew that you have to bring in. So let me ask you just I mean, maybe you can't share this, but if you can, it'd be great knowing how hard you work to get the program where it is today um, on, mm -hmm. on a government level, is there interest in raising or continuing to bump up things as the state sees more and more productions coming? Because again, what we're all saying is things build with repetition, right? You'll get more crew as more productions come in, infrastructure will build as more productions come in. So I'm assuming the state sees that and they will, they're willing to sort of, continue to enhance the program to remain competitive? Well, if if they're listening to me, um, <laughs> <laughs> you certainly are hearing that. Um, you know, the thing that 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 I tell legislators and and folks at DOR and the Department of Employment and Economic Development is that, you know, we're not looking for the most generous incentive per we want we want to build an industry we don't want boom and bust we want mm -hmm. steady growth and uh really public private partnerships so that you know the state invests in a way that's going to attract the the private uh, investment that we see happening in other states when the state invests. So, um, yes, I would fully expect that that the state programs will grow as the industry grows. Because the compensation cap you have right now is is pretty competitive. If you think about, um, I think Illinois has the same, if not maybe slightly less. New Jersey, same thing. Even New York. Uh, allowing above the line uh, for the first time. I think they're capping it at 500,000. So, yeah, I mean, it, again, it's uh, it's not like Minnesota is just new to the game. The incentive has just been upped they're, so that the game's been uh, shifted up and it's encouraging to hear. So I wanted to jump back to the aspect of transfer. No, before I do that, types of projects. What types of projects? I know you uh, scripted, unscripted. Uh, what, what What qualifies? Um, both scripted and unscripted, uh, feature film and television, uh, pilot series, uh, all of that qualifies um, as long as it's a, a, a qualified expenditure of a million dollars minimum. Um, so, yeah, there I mean, the the restrictions are pretty much the same as they are in most other states. Um, you know, no news shows, no sporting events, no porn, um, <laughs> but not no student films, um, but feature length and television for sure. But you know what's exciting about um, Melody um, and the new program that she so tire Tyler. I, I'm, I'm having one of those days that she's worked on so hard um, is it allows to bring keys in that have a lot of experience. And I think that to me, because again, and I'm going to keep, um, you know, saying this over and over as a producer and I go to States, my thing is economic impact within the state. So that's how important it is to me. But with Melody doing this, um, you know, we're able to bring keys in that can train and, you know, and then that allows us to hire more people underneath them. Um, you know, and also there are groups in California and I've experienced them lately where I'll be at an event or a party and, 65% of the people I meet are from Minnesota and they're like, what's going on in Minnesota? And I'm like, you know, there's all this production and their eyes literally go, oh, you know what? And, and yeah. that's the kind of thing it, it, and also this is what I, I say this to most business, um, you know, CEOs, when I speak to them is you want to keep your young people in your state. And there's so many places in these, these states that we've all shot in these rural areas 
that all the all the young people are leaving. And if you can take production into parts of the country where they never thought they would have production, people will stay there, you know, and they will thrive and they will have jobs. And I think that's a really important thing that that these guys are doing. And um, especially with the new program, I think it's going to well, be. A, I'll quickly a add, you know, Melody has done a lot of work to help launch a, a new 501c6 uh, trade organization, which brings together a lot of local businesses, stakeholders and even individual um, artists and workers to help advocate for the industry. And I think as producers come to Minnesota, whether it's on the studio level or on the independent level, you know, that organization is going to, you know, be helping to keep an eye on how things are operating so that it's not just the, the producer's and the state, uh, you know, working together, there's going to be local advocates, you know, trying to help keep the machine well oiled, listen and observe what challenges may be happening and, and advocate to the state uh, in, in whatever way is necessary to help, you know, foster things the way that, say, the New York Post-Production Alliance has been very successful in New York, helping to advocate for post there and, and make a very successful tax credit program in New York. If you know, I can I just to... go back to to crew and um, training for one second, because I know that that that's an issue all over the country. And, yep. and here in Minnesota, you know, it's been the, the worst thing I think that you can do is train young people for jobs that don't exist. And so we are now at, in the position to, if we can bring these major projects here that where students can, or young people can get on a set and actually work in an environment that is going to train, you know, you can only do so much in a classroom. Um, So uh, in order to, We know that we need to increase our workforce. We need to diversify our workforce. And that is absolutely possible in this industry. We know that. Um, We've seen it on a smaller scale. Um, You know, a number of years ago, HBO uh, shot a pilot here in Minnesota that was based in uh, the Somali community. And a lot of Somali young people got their first taste of of work on a set. Unfortunately, a lot of them who wanted to stay in the business left. So um, now we want those folks to come home and we want to keep training new people. And uh, we know that our unions are committed to that as well. So, Melly, I think we only have about five minutes and I wanted to jump to Van and see if he had to, wanted to add to that point about about training and diversity in the state. Yeah, I just use my own example. Um as sort of a lesson, you know, I, 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 I went to the university of Minnesota, become a journalist and, and I studied political science. I, my plan was to work as a white house correspondent covering the president, uh, you know, Sam Donaldson, Ted Koppel were my, were my heroes, those guys. Um, and, and I had, I was at a, a journalism convention and I, I saw she's got to have it. And that movie, directed by Spike Lee was such a, you know, it was such, I had such an epiphany sitting and watching that movie about a young African-American filmmaker telling this story about a woman who has got three suitors and, and telling it in this kind of funny way. But at the core of it, it was really a message movie for me because it was this young, young guy telling this story, this really, this, I thought a feminist story and that really looked at the, examples of if if it were a guy having three girlfriends he was looked at as a stud and this woman having three three male suitors you know you know there was there was a different perspective on on those things and i thought wow that's really interesting for to be able to do that and you know i got my start in in the in film and TV production through working with Spike Lee, I literally wrote a letter and I got hired to go out there as an unpaid intern to New York. And I learned the craft, you know, really from the ground up. And, you know, that was almost 35 years ago. And I've just seen how, how 
this industry can take a person who's motivated and willing to learn and have kind of a, a, a knack for it and to see them develop a career and, and, uh, you know, a life, you know, wrapped around this. And, and it's incredible. Uh, I'll give you one other example. You know, I, I brought a film here uh, along with a producing partner of mine, Effie Brown. We were shooting out in Stillwater, which is a St. Paul suburb. Uh, we had a 20 day shoot. And one of the young people who showed up from Los Angeles with the DP was a young, uh, a young electrician. He'd done like one other project. His name is Justin Dixon. And Justin showed up in, in December in Minnesota when it was about, you know, it was below zero. And he showed up in a, in a, you know, a hoodie and a pair of Chuck. <laughs> and once they got their, you know, per diem and stuff straight to REI and they got outfitted for winter gear. But Justin Dixon had literally worked on one other project. He's now one of the most in-demand young gaffers in the country, you know, and and it, and it's just inspiring to see that and to be able to replicate that for for young folks here in Minnesota. It feels, you know, I feel like I have something to give back to my state, and uh, you know, and if we can develop this the right way with an inclusive approach, you know. I, I just think it's really exciting, and I think we well, have that opportunity. And, and then you and others have, have really taken the initiative to to reach out to you know the, the community here and and do trainings, introduce them to you know you could be a stunt performer or a stunt coordinator, and I, I think you know there is outreach happening here to try to introduce younger people to the possibilities that they could have that, you know, you, you're bombarded by, you know, careers in music or career as an athlete, but there's so much more uh, that a person can do in the entertainment industry has so much opportunity. And, and there are people here uh, like Van that, that are reaching out and, and trying to introduce, uh, you know, a new generation of talent. Uh, and, and once the projects come here, as Melody says, it's going to be a lot easier to, introduce those people onto the set so that they can drive their own careers here. Yeah. Well, and one, one, one little thing that Dave is referencing a couple of weeks ago, uh, I had a couple of friends in town uh, who, who are stunt coordinators and we had 35 young people, including David <laughs> and David uh, showed up <laughs> young and young at heart. And, uh, and at the end of that experience, and we, and you know, we showed some clips from the movie Ronin with car chase sequence. We did some demonstrations with some toy cars. Uh, and, and at the end of it, one young lady came up and she said that she had served two tour tours in Iraq. Uh, and she's here working locally. She's trying to get her acting career going, but she said, you know what? She had never given it any thought that she could become a stunt player or a stunt coordinator. And she said, look, I've already got weapons training. I, I've driven transport vehicles in Fallujah. This, this, is, this calls to me. So unless someone's exposed to those opportunities, that's just one department on a, on a film production or a TV series. And it was so great to hear that. So now she sees a future uh, and she doesn't have to go away. Hopefully, if we get some stuff going here uh, and she could you know, develop that and pursue that as a career. And that you is know, a really good thing about Minnesota is um, there are a lot of opportunities here that necessarily wouldn't be in a in in Los Angeles or New York or Atlanta. And I think um, I always bring up Nicole Pierre, who was a young girl on the first movie that we did. And she wanted to be in the grip and electric department. And after the third movie, um, those guys are like, we use her no matter what. And this is a young girl that had absolutely no experience. She knew she wanted to do something in the business. And when she said she wanted to be grip and electric, I was like, well, that's cool. <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, we talk about production accountants, you know, people that are bookkeepers wanting to be production accountants because everybody needs a production accountant, um, you know, production law, there's all kinds of things and opportunities that bringing production here to Minnesota um, will, you know, Jobs are are everywhere on this on, on our sets, and people have no idea, you know. Um, so There's a lot of people that work in print advertising for yeah. places like Target. You know, they're ready for those entry level positions yeah. to be, you know, a buyer or a set dresser or a costumer. Yeah. There's lots of carpenters around town, uh, you know. So, you know, to Mandy's point, yeah, you know, great. I wanted to leave it with well, 
hopefully we'll have time for one question, but I wanted to jump back to Lou Allen because he said something that I really loved hearing in that uh, when he is speaking to studios and talking or selling locations that Minnesota is sort of on his list again. And so if government officials are, uh, from the state are listening, what would you like to tell them uh, in terms of how the incentive could get uh, enhanced uh, in the next session? Well, I'm, I'm impressed with uh, the state of, of the current incentive. I think it's very attractive. I compared it uh, when I met with Melody and Ben and David earlier, and there are a lot of elements in it that, that it compete with most of the incentives around North America. Um, I think it's the other things that need to be thought about first. If there are government officials listening, hey, uh, find us, make sure you come up with a streamlined permitting process. Make it easy for filmmakers to shoot in your communities. Don't make everything an obstacle. Uh, if we need to use a road and we need a short term closure, make that possible. If you can bring if you can make the filmmaking experience more smooth and efficient, uh, you'll be offering something that a lot of the sort of overshot um, incentive heavy states uh, are not able to deliver anymore. So I would say on that level, the, the incentive will continue to grow. And mm -hmm. like every set of the, there'll be a lot of um, hits and misses and a lot of things that are learned through experience to uh, to improve the incentive. But I think it's pretty solid right now. But make the filmmaking experience as smooth. And and I mean, it's a tough process. Filmmaking yeah. is an arduous, difficult process. <laughs> uh, you get to see these wonderful products at the end. They don't know about the, you know, warn all these young people. They'll be working 12 to 14 hours. Uh, a day. That's what we do. Um, and it's a very stressful industry, much more than making entertainment has any right to be. Uh, but make that less stressful, make it an environment where a filmmaker and a company can come in and have a great experience on every level. Right. Well, Natalie, I'm going to jump back to you because I think we've hit the, uh, the one hour mark. I don't know if we have time for uh, any questions, but I'll, I'll leave that for you to decide. <laughs> we we've gotten quite a few questions. Um, one just on the topic of um, crew availability, jobs available. Um, we did get a few questions about how to go about getting involved and where productions are looking for um, those to hire for their um, for their crew. So um, maybe Mandy and Van, if you could uh, give us some ideas of where you might be looking and how people can get involved if they're not already um, in the crew base. Well, that's an interesting thing. And I think Melody and I talked about that a, a couple of months ago when we were sitting down is there really needs to be a central information hub of who's available in, in the state. And the reason I say that is because a lot of times when you're an independent producer and also independent producer is such a wide um, definition because, you know, there are twenty five million dollar movies that are considered independent and then there are five hundred thousand dollars movies that are independent. So. For someone like me that I come into a state, I my first thing is who do I know in that state? And and a lot of recommendations. Um, that happens all the time. Get involved. People need to know you're there. And um, you know, we we put out a lot of um information. The state knows when we're coming. Um, you know, I have to fill out all the paperwork for all the incentives and stuff, and and they know that we're gonna be there. Um, so I think that's, that's the, the main thing is get involved with every organization that you possibly can, because I will guarantee that my ACs, you know, my, my best boys, my, whatever come from recommendations of people that are the, you know, the department heads, um, hair and makeup is the same way. It's, you know, so that's, that's a, my suggestion is just getting involved with every aspect of the industry in Minnesota that you, that you possibly can. I mean, I really quickly, point out that, just, and I defer to Melody, but I'd I'll point out ahead, on our product, our production guide is available on our website, min min uh, film and t min film TV, uh, dot org, and you can go up there. You can list your credits. You can get it on our, in our directory. Uh, you don't have to live here yet, uh, but get into that uh, production guide and list yourself as a you know whatever your skill set is, and I'll defer to. Hand it off to Melody. I know we're about to wrap up, but but Melody, are you comfortable with people knowing how to get a hold of you? Because I just glanced at the Q and A um, 
chat string and there are yeah. a whole lot of people who are wanting to have more specific questions answered about Absolutely. the incentive. So how can they get hold of you? Absolutely. Um, uh, you can go to our website, mnfilmtv.org and my contact is on there, but uh, it's very easy to get in touch with me. It's Melody, M-E-L-O-D-I-E at mnfilmtv.org. And Lou and Melody, one of the things I will do, I'll work with you, Melody, is that we take the unanswered questions and uh, we respond to everyone via email so I can work with you, Melody, on that. I just wanted to bring up one really quick thing, uh, maybe for you, Melody and Mandy, and that we touched on it, but didn't really get into detail is the um, the local regional incentives that the state has to offer. And I just, we had a very high level, just mentioned that, that you get that on top of what the state offers. Right. Northern Minnesota offers um, three different regional rebates, Um, the city of Duluth, St. Louis County and uh, the area that's known as the Iron Range, um, which is just an amazing area for folks that aren't familiar with it. Look it up, Google it. Um, um, And there is, you know, some overlap in those. uh, But if you go to our website, uh, to the incentives page, you will find uh, links to details about all of those regional programs. Right. Yeah. Sorry, Natalie. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Uh, thank you for answering. Um, we are a few minutes over time and I know that uh, people have busy schedules. So we are going to wrap up um, with that question. But for the questions that we did not answer, um, as Joe mentioned, we will be following up via email as best we can. And I did share links to the Minnesota Film and Television website so you can find incentives information, job postings, how to get training and how to get involved. And if you'd like help with incentives beyond what we've discussed today, um, please know that you can always reach out to us at ep.com slash incentives. That is where you can find jurisdiction comparison tool. You can find contact information for the various film offices you can get in touch with people like Melody and we are happy to offer our services to make sure that your film is getting the best incentives and financial guidance in the industry. And if we didn't get your question or you'd like to revisit any of the information from today's session, please know that you can go to ep.com slash master series. We do post the recordings there and we also send out recordings via email to everyone who's registered for a session. So you never miss any of the wonderful information that we have in the master series. So I would like to now say thank you to our panelists and to our audience for tuning in today. It was wonderful to have you all here. Lots of great information covered, and we hope to see you at our future master series.